we can solve quadratic equations by taking the square root sometimes. They have to be in a certain form, but that is an option for us to solve them. But before we actually work on solving an equation, let's just introduce ourselves to a couple things. Um, a number r is a square root of a number if s, if r squared equals s. So all that's saying is that if a number r is squared, then that number has to be the square root. So vocabulary to learn, I won't necessarily use the word radicand too often. I'll usually just say radical. Um, but if you guys had the square root of 14, the whole radical itself is the square root of 14 there in that first box. The radical sign is just the root part. And then the radicand is the part underneath the square root or underneath the radical sign. So we've worked with radicals a little bit before. So you guys kind of know the product and the quotient property. But it works both ways. So say you have A and B separated from each other, you can multiply them together if they're under the, that same root and get the product of AB. Vice versa, you can separate them. It just kind of depends on which way benefits you if you're going to do it. And the same thing goes with division or quotient. If you guys have the square root of A over the square root of B, you can make it just the square root of A over B. So you can separate them or put them together, whatever kind of works or benefits you for what you're doing. So like the square root of 12 times 3 can become the square root of 36, which is 6, so it would benefit you there to multiply them together. And the square root of 48 over the square root of 3 well, if you guys would put that under one radical and divide 48 by 3, you would get 16. The square root of 16 is 4. So let's go down and work with just some simplifying to refresh our memory a little bit. So you guys are looking for perfect squares. So like 80 would be the square root or the product, rather, of 16 times 5. You're looking for those perfect squares. Remember, 2, 4, 9, 25, 36. You're looking, I forgot 16, the one I just used, but you're looking for those perfect squares that are divisible or go into the number underneath the square root. So 16 and 5, so this would be 4, square root 5 is still left. So that's just simplifying. Now, if we go over here, the product property, when you multiply things, you can just multiply them right together. So 6 times 21 would be 126. And the largest perfect square that goes into 126 is 9. 9 and 14. 9 times 14. So we end up with square root of 9 is 3. 14 is left underneath. Remember, you guys can always plug these in and check. Like, do square root of 6 times square root of 21 in the calculator. Get that decimal. Is it equivalent or equal to 3 times square root of 14? We're just manipulating them. Um, it should be equivalent or the same value. And then 7 over the square root of 16. Square root of 16 is just 4. So in this case, we're really just going to simplify that bottom. And then because there are no radicals left or roots left in the bottom, you're actually just done. So let's practice rationalizing.